What is going on everyone, Knights here with another Mordhau class guide video. I'd like to preface the video today with a disclaimer that the saying OP uh, should be taken with a grain of salt and that there is no class in the game that is just hands down the best end all be all class out there. Uh, I think the devs did an insanely good job at balancing the game out so that if you're you know, applying your points correctly and towards things that actually add value to your class that most classes are going to be more or less the same and it really comes down to what classes work the best for certain maps and ultimately who's the better swordsman or whoever's got higher skill. I want to also mention that uh, this build is not necessarily for everybody but I think it is an insanely good hybrid for People that are transitioning out of using shields, which I do recommend. I've never been a shield player, but if you are a shield player and you're used to having that little extra line of defense, I do recommend you transition over to the buckler. Uh, and, and, and I've got a few reasons why. Uh, one, if you look at, at the uh, buckler's advanced stats here and you look at the is block held, basically what this means is the parry, the block, it is not holdable, so there's an actual window of time where you need to parry, just like when you're parrying with a normal sword. And uh, the main thing here to take away from this is that there's actually a higher skill ceiling using the buckler, and if you're looking to transition to no shield, which I do recommend uh, if you want to you know, be well-rounded, is to know how to use all the weapons in the game, being able to transition to buckler it has a slightly larger window of parrying than a normal sword would but it's also not as cheap as just having a shield that's passively deflecting all these shots another thing that makes bucklers so incredibly strong despite its its tininess is that it has an intrinsic perk that basically doubles the amount of stamina you have and what i mean by this is if you're in a stamina fight uh, if you're dueling somebody or you're 1vxing guys and your stamina's running out uh, and you're totally out of stamina, instead of getting your sword knocked out of your hand or your weapon knocked out, you get the buckler knocked out. And not only does the buckler get knocked out, normally if you have a shield, a, a standard shield, and it gets knocked out of your hand, on the very next hit, if you, if you don't kill him instantly, within two hits, they're going to knock your shield, they're going to knock your sword, and then they're going to kill you. Whereas the buckler, the only shield in the game that does this is after you lose the stamina and your buckler gets knocked to the ground, you go back to max stamina. So 100 out of 100 with whatever weapon you're using. And if you win your fight and you, you manage to pick your buckler back up, this can happen over and over and over again. You getting your buckler knocked out of your hand, recovering your buckler and going back to max stam. It's very, very good and uh, will get you out of a lot of tight situations. So another thing is the Messer. Now, the Messer I find to be the best combination for using with the Buckler. And some people use Falchion, some people use Rapier. Uh, I think Falchion doesn't have quite enough range for, for actually uh, you know, being competitive in Frontline because a lot of people are using Halibrid. Uh, and you're just going to get outranged by a lot of players. So I recommend the Messer. There's not a whole lot that gets changed except when you when you use a buckler with a Messer, you're going to be using it in its alternate mode, which is the one-handed mode. Now, if you take a look over here at your windup, uh, this stat here does not get affected whatsoever. So if you look at the alternate mode, see how those numbers are changing below, but the windup does not get affected whatsoever. So the benefit to two-handing a Messer is your combo speed is a little bit faster. It's like 25 milliseconds, but your release. So basically what your release is, is after you land a successful attack, it enables you to parry. So it's not instantaneous, but this figure here, the milliseconds is what enables you to uh, parry faster. So if you look, take a look at the alternative mode, your combo is a little bit slower. I mean, these are things that you're barely going to notice, but just, you know, so you guys understand then your ability to parry after an attack uh, does get a little bit faster. So that those milliseconds are, are shorter, which means that the duration in between 
uh, is going to enable you to block faster. So if I'm in a 1VX or you know whatever, 1v2, 1v3, um, if I land an attack and then a second guy comes up and tries to strike me, I can instantly parry. Uh, whereas if I did not have good release time, um, I would not be able to get back in time to defend. And, I, and, and being able to do this makes you be able to take on multiple targets at once, which I find the buckler uh, to be to, to enable you to win certain engagements that are 1VX engagements like that, uh, more so than just a single sword build. Uh, another thing to consider with the Messer, it's one of the best five point weapons in the game, and it has insanely good track damage. Uh, as you can see, it one shots people with no head armor. Uh, a lot of a lot of weapons do that. Most weapons above five points do that. Um, but it's all around damage is super high. You're going to be two shotting most opponents is what I'm trying to say. If you can land two drags, uh, 80 plus percent of the time, you're going to kill them. Now, the stab damage is kind of where it lacks. It's all right. It's better than war axe or things like that. But it's something that I would recommend is do a stab feint. So, so stab feint to drag or stab feint to excel as opposed to drag feint to stab. And, and if you really have to drag feint to stab to, you know, to sneak in an attack, if that's all that works, go for it. But in most cases, I would highly recommend if you are going to feint, do a stab feint to drag or drag feint to drag, uh, not the other way around because you want to land a drag as your, as your hit, given that it does a lot more damage. And finally, guys, I want to touch on this is the bandage. One of the most subtly strong items in the game because it only costs one point now that is barely anything you guys and uh, on top of it the bandage you get two of them uh, in case you didn't know and they do 50 percent of your health so 50 hp gets returned to you almost instantly uh, yes you do need to disengage briefly it does enable you to get back into the fight a lot faster than than any of the perks would like tenacious would uh it allows you to get right back in the fight and if you keep going to the storage chest which there's typically like four plus of them on the map depending on the map you're going to be able to replenish your bandages very quickly and go on some insane kill streaks because it's like basically infinite health and if you think about it infinite stamina considering you have twice the amount of stamina as the average player out there uh, what this enables you to do is it allows you to be very committal with your feints you can faint two, three times, and even if you run out of stamina, in the back of your mind, you know even if you lose the stamina game, you're still going to have a sword and max stamina at the end of it. So that's really, really awesome. Don't be afraid to faint frequently a little bit more than you normally would. And that's that's really good at winning fights in, in frontline as well. I don't think the perks are that necessary because I think the bandage makes up for all the regen perks. And having the buckler, I think, makes up for not having any of the stamina perks as well. So yeah, guys, I hope this video helped you. I know this is not like a one-size-fits-all class, but I think it's got insanely good potential for defensive and offensive play styles. My next video will likely be what is the best mouse for Mordhau and what are the best mouse settings. And I might, might uh, squeeze in keybinds in there as well just so you guys can see how I like to play. All right, guys, hope you have a nice day, and I really appreciate you dropping by. Peace.